nothing. So let's fix that. Subscribers, welcome back. And if you're new here, my channel is based all around motorcycle mechanics and how to save money. So if any of that interests you, feel free to subscribe. And if you think about it, the worst thing that'll happen is you might learn something in one of my videos that'll help you save some money. So with that being said, let's get started. All right, so this is the bike. This is the problem I'm having with it. So we'll go to start it. All right, got it in neutral. And let's see what we got. Nothing. We'll try it again with a little throttle. Troubleshooting steps number one. First thing you want to do is check the basics. What I mean by that is by making sure you have a fully charged battery. Then you're also going to want to get some starter fluid and spray in the air intake and we'll discuss that a little bit more in detail in a second. You're going to want a clean air filter and you're also going to want new spark plugs if you are in need for them like I was. Now when it comes to starter fluid, if you spray in the air intake and the bike runs, then that typically means that you have a fuel issue. If you spray in the air intake and it does not run, that will typically mean you have an electrical issue. So then you'll know which side of the circuit to look for. So knocking out the air filter and going to go pick up some spark plugs. I had some uh, spark plugs I had on hold. There's the super long spark plug. All right, let's get gapping. Now you may see this type of spark plug gap tool. It's trash. They're known for being inconsistent and inaccurate. Pick up one of these instead. It's the wire gauge type. What are you doing, Echo? Now that is a trivalent plating, basically like a coating that NGK spark plugs come with. You don't want to apply anti-seize to those, otherwise you could over torque them when you tighten down the spark plugs. I'm gonna take this. Now we're just gonna apply some dielectric grease to the inside of the spark plug boot. This is just to keep any stray electrical pulses inside of the spark plug boot. Now, I checked the throttle position sensor off camera and I, it all checked out. All right, you guys, so I got the bike taken apart. I was just testing a couple of things. As you saw, we just replaced the spark plugs. Then I ended up testing the uh, throttle position sensor. And then the next order of business for me was to test the uh, air the mass air pressure sensors and if you see right here we have two of them I've got these hoses in the way though but we got one here and there's one over here so there's two of them and they both are taking uh, airlines from the air intake which you can actually see right here so that's one and that's the other one back here and those are running up there so that way it's able to see what pressures are coming into the bike so that way it knows the correct air fuel ratio to give the bike based on the amount of air that's coming in now i have my probes hooked up the way the service manual indicates to test the voltage that these are supposed to be putting off 
So I'm gonna test it now. So you see the multimeter is running. We're looking at, I think it was, all right, 3.75 to 4.25 or something like that but i know the minimum is 3.75 so let's we're going to turn the key i'm going to move these around so that way i can actually get a reading so now if you see there we're at three point sorry get it a better angle okay there we go we're at 3.440 so that is definitely out of spec it's supposed to be a minimum of 3.75 so I already got new ones and that's them right here. I'm gonna throw those in and we're gonna test those out. Now when it comes to testing these out, I ended up plugging these leads into the back of this connector. These leads right here, they end up plugging straight into the multimeter. These are a very good investment. I've had these for probably around uh, two years now. They are very, very pointy and very sharp. Hello, Echo. And these are able to get into a lot of tight nooks and crannies that the other ones I have aren't allowed to. So this is a pretty good investment. If you guys are looking at picking these up, it'll be linked in the description. And just so you guys know, I did test both of them, not just the one, and they're both reading exactly the same. And that's the reason I ended up picking up two of those. So we're gonna replace both of them and see if that fixes our problem. Now, I'm not a big fan of throwing parts at things, but these are out of spec and this could possibly cause the issue that we're running into. Fortunately, I got these through Amazon at a uh, okay price. So if th this doesn't work out, I can just return it, get my money back and continue troubleshooting. All right, so I got the part switched out. <clears throat> They're not bolted in, Just a, this is just a troubleshoot. We got the hoses underneath already hooked up on both of them. So now we're just gonna throw the gas tank back on so that way it's not kinked or anything. And let's give it a, a test drive or a test run. All right, let's see what happens. All right, you guys, so don't mind the mess of wires. So what was going on was I installed the new ones in there and then I just gave the bike a test, you know, just to start it, see what would happen. And of course, didn't start. And so I'm like, okay, I'm sure these, these are the problem from my, from my troubleshooting. I gotta see what voltages these things are putting out. And if you notice, they're putting out less than one volt. And if you remember what I was saying earlier, they're supposed to be at least 3.75. So I'm like, what's up with that I don't get that so I ended up wiring it up this way thinking that maybe because of the way I was going in through uh, the back of this connector that maybe I just wasn't touching metal and that's probably the problem so I ended up taking it apart I use these test leads which man these things are a godsend just like the leads that I have you know just so you guys know everything will be in the description if you guys want to pick any of this up for yourself but this is what I used kind of Jerry rig and use the multimeter to make sure that I was I was actually touching metal and getting the readings I was supposed to get and this is what I'm getting so definitely not happy about it um, so these are just straight up defective and I noticed that the part numbers are actually completely different if you look here and I was thinking that maybe they just changed vendors on me or something but they didn't it's still Denso but over here you notice this one So you can see the two, this is the old one, and then you got the new one that's over there. But definitely different, different part numbers, different everything, and when I clicked on it, it was this exact part number, but I ended up getting something else. So definitely not happy about it. I'm gonna have to return these and get the right ones ordered. So I solved the problem by looking up a forum, and I found this. It says, most power commanders are powered by the injectors on the bike. When you turn the key on, the fuel pump gets power and primes the fuel circuit. When this happens, the injectors get power and the power commander also gets power and lights up. After a few moments, the fuel pump has pressurized the system and usually shuts off. If the fuel pump shuts off, the injectors lose power and the power commander shuts off. If you attempt to start the bike when the power commander is off, the bike may take longer to start than normal until the fuel pump comes back on. The fuel pump may come on instantly after a few engine revolutions or on some bikes seemingly not at all. If the fuel pump does not come on, the bike will not start. We recommend starting the bike once you turn the key on. Do not wait for the fuel pump to shut off. 
or a check engine light to go out. All right, let's see if this works. So I'm gonna turn the key to the ignition and once the fuel pump primes, I'm immediately going to start it. I'm not gonna let it finish priming. Let's see what happens. What? No way. All right, let's try that again. This is a cold start, so. Son of a bitch. All right, well, there you go. That's all it was. Complicated, but simple. All right, you guys, and that's gonna be it. That is how I ended up fixing this issue. Fixing this issue. Uh, simple solution, but the problem is basically handled, or at least I know what I'm supposed to do at this point. So with that being said, this closes out this project. Don't gotta worry about it anymore. And I actually, at the end of the day, aside from the spark plugs, I ended up spending nothing. So good there. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Go ahead and give this a like, give this a big fat subscribe. Hope you guys enjoyed the content and I'll see you guys in the next video.